both Manila and I are really proud to be hosting these events. Uh, not only are we getting input from different parts of the state, but it is important for us to have the opportunity to listen. And uh, when we're campaigning, we're doing a lot of the talking. This way, we're actually listening to people and helping, helping us develop a budget that reflects the, the people of the state of Wisconsin. So it's great to be here. Another good opportunity for us to uh, hear stories and, and input from people that uh, really will help us impact the budget going forward. So with that, we'd be glad to answer any questions. I've heard a lot of people saying, oh, we've heard that before, we've heard that before from kind of the moderators. Are you kind of hearing that also going around these different listening sessions that people kind of have recurring? There, there are recurring uh, concerns, but uh, I think different places have kind of more emphasis on broader themes. Uh, and just looking at the numbers in different, uh, different groups, uh, clearly, uh, I think people in western Wisconsin uh, are really concerned about environmental issues, and we're, we're seeing that played out. But the important thing, and this is, the, the, in my opinion, the cool part of this process, is that then people start interacting with the, each other, start connecting the dots, and really coming up with some good solutions. So I, it, hearing a lot of different things, but I think, uh, I think there is a difference in flavor from place to place. One of the people I just spoke with talked about, um, you know, Wisconsin doesn't have its own state bank, so when they're borrowing money and there's mm -hmm. the line by budget item, that money is going elsewhere. And he kept citing North Dakota as a place of a good importance. Is that something that could you think could be considered, is instead of borrowing outside of the state and sending money outside of the state, sure. borrowing money within the state and being able to then generate more money back into the local economy. Yeah, and that, that's, a, that's an important point. Uh, you know, we can look at that, but I, you know, uh, having local banks uh, be part of the conversation I think is important. And we've all, I've always believed uh, around the issue of economic development, if, we, if uh, young entrepreneurs or people that are business people in a local, especially small towns, borrowing from a local bank helps circulate that money right within the community. So I think, uh, I think we have a lot of that going on in Wisconsin at the local level. I understand North Dakota is a little different because of the, the uh, sparsity of, this, of the state. It's not saying I'm saying it's a bad idea. I think, I think we can focus on the local banks actually in Wisconsin to make that happen. Reaction, reaction to the federal judge's ruling on the Affordable Care Act, sir? Well, I think it was a you know unfortunate decision. Uh, I, I believe it's going to end up back in the Supreme Court, and so I think we have some time to react to it. But you know, the bottom line is, if the Affordable Care Act goes away, there's going to be lots of people in the state of Wisconsin, regardless of what we do of passing laws that will state laws that will impact the whole issue of pre-existing conditions. That's a concern. So. I, I'm hopeful that uh, they'll, they'll be able to resolve that so the Affordable Care Act still stays in place. Are you going to include that in your budget? The, the pre-existing conditions? Yes, that, that issue. Uh, possibly. No, we, we have to look at the legalities or, or the legal issues that exist with the, with, uh, with the Affordable Care Act possibly going away. I think it's years away from di disappearing, but what happens in the meantime is that people will lose faith in, the, faith in the system and it'll it deteriorate on its own. So uh, we have to make sure that we're in a good place going forward. But the issue around pre-existing conditions in Wisconsin has has a lot to do with the fact that we have a lot of self-insured employers and uh, you know public and private sector that are not covered by what is presently in state law. So we have to take a look at that. That's an important issue. Obviously, a lot's been cut in education. So kind of moving forward, you know, what kind of plans do you have in order to you know help that along with this new administration? Well, we're certainly going to. Uh, we talked about a lot on the <laughs> campaign trail. We're going to be our budget that we talked about with the people of Wisconsin and were elected because of that, we will be proposing to the legislature. It's going to be a large increase, but uh, we believe we can do it without an increase in local property taxes, and uh, uh, so we're going to be moving forward with it. There's a lot of, a lot of moving pieces in that that I think will help school districts kind of get back to where they were 10 years ago or eight years ago. And uh, so we're, we're going to move forward on uh, with that plan that we, that the people of Wisconsin uh, voted, voted, us, uh, voted us in. And out of all these stops, obviously, there's been a lot of people talking about a lot of different programs and things they'd like to see funded. Um, and it doesn't seem feasible to do every single one. So what's kind of going to be the process 
um, you know, when you're done with these budget listening sessions to kind of look over everything. How are you going to make that determination and make your priorities um, before the budget? Sure. Is due? Well, we're, we're going to take a look at what we talked about during the campaign, both of us, no matter where we were, were campaigning. And we talked about transportation, education, and health care were the major ones. So we'll, we'll be focusing on, on those areas. But the good thing about these listening sessions, not only are we getting input, but we're getting we're recording and, and taking down every single one of these things. They're going to be sorted and sifted and uh, electronically. It's not going to happen with, <laughs> with human, human work because there's just so much of it. But I think we're going to find that what people are talking about are the exact same things as what we ran on. And so we feel confident that that going forward. But I, I, I can't, I can't under or under uh, uh, emphasize the issue of what we're seeing here today in La Crosse and what we saw in the Capitol a couple of weeks ago. You think of the process that's involved with that. We had, we had significant legislative changes that were passed and signed by the governor that were done in the dead of night with uh, very little public input, huge ramifications, and here we are in La Crosse, Wisconsin, listening to people saying, hey, what's up? What do you think is important? To me, that's a whole different thing. And we're going to continue going forward for the next four years and hopefully afterward to make sure that we continue to listen. How soon do you hope to announce members of your cabinet, sir? Well, hopefully that will start that process this week. We're working hard towards reaching that conclusion. We haven't finished by any stretch, but uh, we will be making some announcements later this week. I got to ask because the when it comes to the groups that were there, the two largest ones were the transportation or the economic development, as you talked right. about, as well as the health care. You just addressed the uh, you know Affordable Care Act, but right. what can you guys do without knowing how that's going to shape out, but help address health care issues for residents in Wisconsin when you saw the vast majority of people here in that group raising their concerns about about that issue. Absolutely. Well, we have to start by taking that $400 million in Medicaid expansion money that we've never taken. We, we've less left over the last eight years $1.1 billion of federal money that would advantage the system. Not only would it make health care for people that are struggling more affordable and accessible, but once we do that, that lowers premiums for everybody because instead of having healthy people kind of pay, the, pay for others, it's going to make sure that everybody gets good health care. That has to happen. So we will be, in, we'll be asking that for that transition in, in this budget. And do you feel like one you more can, question. We gotta get going. Do you feel like you can make that work with having still a Republican legislator? You don't have the overwhelming majority there. Well, we're, we're going to take this directly to the people of Wisconsin, and, uh, and, and hopefully that if we can't convince the legislature and legislators of this, I think that there are actually the people that vote for them in office will convince them of doing that. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you.